Hey guys, welcome back. Just want to do a little update on the axolotl eggs. Um, most of you know that I have two pairs of axolotls. Uh, the oldest pair, this is their second spawn. Uh, but for anyone that doesn't know what axolotls are, I thought I would just give some loose, uh, very general information on them. Um, they're basically an amphibian and they have the distinct um, difference of being kind of stuck in a, a larval stage uh, when they're developing into salamanders. They, um, however, on rare occasions, some of them do go ahead and morph into terrestrial type salamanders and they look a lot like tiger salamanders if you wanted to Google and see what they look like uh, if they do come out of the water. Those. Uh, are said not to live as long as those that remain larval and stay in the water. Um, these guys are from Mexico originally um, and from cold lakes, uh, two different lakes. One lake does not exist at all now and the other um, is just a series of canals um, that Mexico City is built on. So 20 years ago there were several thousand in a square mile or meter that scientists could collect and study and uh, today there are less than 35 and they're critically endangered and possibly even extinct in some areas of the canals um, and why would we want to study them two reasons um, they've been studied several times even back in the 1800s um, they have the um, ability to regenerate limbs, uh, their tail, gill. Uh, the gills are on the outside and on these little guys that's what you'll see the little feathery wisps that come out uh, where gills would be and uh, they're also resistant to cancer so they're of uh, critical importance um, to humans uh, for those uh, two reasons alone. Uh, there are several different morphs of them um, if you're interested in uh, having some or collecting them, you can find them readily for sale. You can also buy eggs, uh, even have those eggs shipped uh, or have the, the, the newborn larval shipped to you. Um, these guys, as I said, are from my stock and um, I have decided to go ahead and pull some of these out as it's their second spawn. The first spawn I didn't help um, and they did hatch and uh, the parents probably have eaten them. Uh, they're kind of triggered to eat anything that moves and uh, in the wild they would eat small fish and um, insects that might fall in the water, worms, um, crustaceans, that kind of stuff. So uh, having said all of that and I realize that's all rushed and um, a kind of a compilation from some of the several sources uh, that I've studied about these guys so that I could, could take care of them. Um, I would suggest that if you're interested in them that you also do the same and not use this very brief and uh, lack of detail video as a care guide. It's not intended to be that at all. It's just to give a little bit of history and to update people that are interested in them. Um, while I'm talking, we see some of them beginning to wiggle. There are a few that have hatched out. Uh, there are some that are still in the egg. There are some that I suspect may not hatch, um, but I'll keep close watch on them. Um, I did pull them out of their parents' tank last night. Uh, axles like to lay, uh, axolotls, sorry, like to lay on objects uh, and if plants are there either plastic or real these are real obviously they uh, prefer that and they also will lay on a sponge filter or ornament anything like that uh, the water this water it's a plastic bin um, made, might hold about maybe half a gallon and uh, it has uh, half water from their tank uh, and the plants from the tank and then half uh, fresh water that I treated with prime and mixed it. I've given them an air stone 
which some people don't find necessary. Uh, in a container this big, you may not even need to do that. I just like to do it, um, just a personal preference. Uh, you definitely want to be sure they're not being thrown around and jostled around if you do use one. This one's just to give some surface tension. Every now and then you'll see one float by, uh, but they're strong enough to swim away from the bubbles if they need to or want to. Uh, what else about them? When they're hatching out this stage, you can feed them um, uh, baby brine shrimp. They're, you know, it's gonna be like any fish fry, even though they're not fish. Uh, it's, they're gonna need something that's very small that they can get in their mouth, uh, and they are triggered by movement. Um, some people are able to get them to eat things that aren't alive. So if you can, good for you. Uh, it's, this is gonna be an experiment since these are my first uh, hatchlings, uh, but I, uh, their parents were small, uh, not this small, but were babies when I got them uh, from a local fish store oh, over a year ago, I guess now. So uh, that one there that you see on the right may or may not be alive. It's one of three or four that I've been watching. It's out of the egg. Yeah, there she is moving though then. He's moving around. Uh, that's about all that I wanted to say about them. Uh, not being an expert on them, uh, but kind of uh, what I would consider a beginner in their care. Um, I uh, will leave it with that. I'm gonna pull this stone out and so that we get a little better picture maybe. Uh, and I didn't turn any light on on purpose because they're kind of sitting beside, uh, they're not kind of, they are sitting by my coral fish tank and they're getting some light from that and in this case the, the less light the better since these are dark uh, hatchlings they um, and I'm sure there's a better word for uh, newly hatched out some people will say don't put your finger in don't do this don't do that um, but again I'm not here to debate I'm just here to Give an update. Any constructive uh, thoughts or ideals? I know some of you, some of my friends, do keep axolotls and know a lot more about them than I do. Uh, there's a guy I'm watching there that's still in the egg. These guys are all out and are free swimming. I'm going to kind of wrap on the counter and see if who skittles, skid, skedaddles <laughs> around. So you can see that even though it looks like a mostly dead uh, container of axolotls, they're mostly alive. Uh, and some of them may not even be dead. So I'll do that one more time. The more you do that, the more they become uh, accustomed to it and they respond less each time. But here we go. So you can see there are a bunch of baby axolotls. This one up here is, is not, sorry, I need a little pointer. This one is not hatched out of the egg. Uh, and by the way, their eggs look like frog eggs. For those of you that don't know, I don't have a real good way to give an example of those, but they're just in a big blob, a round blob, and they're like frog eggs. Kind of the consistency of jelly that might be a little bit drier, uh, clear. Uh, but yeah, just like frog eggs, that's what they look like. When they lay their eggs, they will uh, just have a little dot in the center of them. And if they are not fertilized, they will um, fungus pretty quickly. Uh, I've only had a few with this spawn uh, that did not get fertilized. Uh, I'm estimating there may be 40 or 50 in here. I did not count them when I was pulling them out last night. The parents were all about, because my axolotls are pretty tame, they'll take stuff out of my hand and come to the top. I sometimes feed them on the top or drop in some blood worms that might not sink right away. So they uh, readily come to the top. So I was trying to just get them out. Um, for now, I'll leave the plants here, but uh, if those don't get enough light, of course, they'll die back. I wanted them for the beneficial bacteria. I wanted to make that point, because these guys are breathing the water, you know, with their 
little gills once they come out of their egg. It's a uh, uh, semi-permeable membrane and so they're able to get oxygen from the water through that like any aquatic egg. Uh, but once they come out, uh, they will be breathing, free breathing um, the oxygen in the water and be susceptible uh, as they, even they would be in eggs to chlorine and that kind of stuff. So you want to treat these guys just like you do. You see when one of them moves, it kind of triggers some of the others. Some free, free swimming ones moving around. So yeah, I wanted the beneficial bacteria off the plant, so I didn't uh, worry too much about pulling all that plant growth out. Uh, left plenty in there for their parents. So yeah, there you go. Uh, please leave me any uh, suggestions, comments, uh, questions. I could answer basic questions about them, um, but there are lots of great resources uh, that you can Google, and as always, make sure that you look at more than one trusted source um, well, I started to call some names, but you guys, if you're interested in them, if you start uh, looking for YouTube videos, you'll find the people that know what they're talking about um, pretty quickly. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and take care, and if you enjoy this, please give us a like.